Yes, so Dad came into the garage in 1939. Yeah. So we were there when Holden first came out. Really? And, uh, and we had a three-year a three waiting list on Holden. To buy cars? Really, when they first came out, yeah. Really? So that was a good business? Yeah, how'd well... You, how'd you go getting the uh, dealership? Did you just go and say you know, how uh, about it? Or? Dad must have... Uh, Organise that or ask for it. Yep, yep. He was a, a farmer from, uh, from Arthurton. Ah, in York Peninsula. York Peninsula. But he was the second son. Ah, that's why he came here. And so they sent him out in the bush. Yep, yeah, as they did. Yeah. Yep. Which was Woodner or? Uh, yes, went out to uh, East Woodner. Yep. And my mum uh, came here as a teacher from Kalangadoo. Which is uh, south east. Yeah. Yep. And of course in those days, uh, uh, plenty of men out in the bush, but not too many ladies. And, no. Uh, and they all stayed. <laughs> <laughs> they were snapped up very fast. <laughs> I believe that the, uh, the queue started to the left. <laughs> For the girls, uh, was it, uh, did she go out teaching? Or yeah, she was a teacher. I was going to say because that was pretty common. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty common. Yeah, I think it was Betty Du Bois said if it wasn't for uh, school teachers, the uh, farmers would have been uh, somewhat wanting for wives. Yeah, <laughs> she was uh, Miss Gom Montgomery from Streaky Bay. Oh yes, Montgomery. Yes. That's right, she was too. Yeah, yeah. My, um, my first school teacher. Oh, that's right, she was. Mm. She mentions that in her interview, yeah. What was she like as a teacher? Oh, good. Mm. Um, what about you, when you were posted to Woodner? There's a few names that still live about here that were your first students. Yes, well, um, they were Barry Wilkins. Bet taught me in grade two. How was she? <laughs> terrific. Mm. Yeah, terrific. Yeah, she's still going strong. Uh, Pat Hines and... Oh, I've, well, I've said it several times to other people before, but certainly Pat Hines is one of the, yeah. one of the great people that, that's been involved in the Woodland Football Club during my time. Um, and my, I was only a young fellow, and Pat was right at the, the end of his career, but he was... Um, I can always remember Pat at training, I, despite his senior years, he was probably in his mid-thirties, right at the end of his playing time, and he would still aim to, to out-sprint or out-run or, or do something better than a young fella, just to set the example. Oh, he, he was a fairly small bloke, but he could run like hell. He had plenty of pace and plenty of ball skills, yeah, and uh, he was a hell of a good sport. He'd never, never crash into a bloke or throw a punch or anything like that, you know. Mm. He was a hell of a good sport, Pat, mm. and uh, yeah, he was a, uh, yeah, he, I played with him in the Mortlock Shield there a few times, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you could just be rely on him, if you could hit the ball his way, you just about bet he'd get it, because he was that quick and ball, ball skills were good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pat, he was a great footballer, that fellow, mm. very highly respected, you mm. know, with, with the community. Henry McKenna was only a little fella, but he played full forward mm -hmm. uh, in association games, mm. more like Shields. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he'd, uh, he'd never miss kicking a goal from, uh, it doesn't matter, didn't matter what the angle was, say within 45 metres, mm -hmm. just, with a flat punt, mm. flat punt. Because there were a lot of flat punts around in those yeah, days. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that was after the drop kick, mm -hmm. and uh, not too many screw punts. Oh, there was a few, fella, a few fellas did the screw punts, but he, mm. he was flat punt. Yep. Could you catch him? Only when he, was, when he stopped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I guess him and I would be around about the same pace. And mm -hmm. He might have been a little bit faster than me. Mm. He's the best locally bred footballer. Without a doubt, brilliant, brilliant player. 
you know, terrific speed. Oh, you know, safe ball handler, you know, mm. wonderful player. Mm. It was a touch, touch and go between Skeeter and, uh, and Pat, as who was the best player, you know, the people will argue. Mm. But uh, no, he was uh, in a totally fair, you know, never did anything dirty. Wonderful player. Uh, I do remember the 73 season, Mike Fettigo's second uh, coaching year. Um, he hurt his knee in a school footy match just at the start of the finals. Um, he missed the second semi and we got belted, I think, and uh, then he came back in the next two finals and pretty much limped around. And um, he he was the best centreman around, and we had to find he had to find someone to play centre. So um, rather than go and pick out some young guy, turned to Heinze, and Heinze was about 83 then, and and um, and he played centre and just you know led the way. Yeah, the, the best player that's ever been bred around here. And of course, he tells a good story about the old boots that he used to wear with. Um, with first of all, you'd nail on the uh, the leather Spruce. stops, sprigs, yeah. and then later on you'd add aluminium. Yeah. yeah, that's right, yeah. You used to maybe dig into your feet? No, oh, yeah. What, what sort of boots did you have? Oh, yeah, I had a, the first up had the old boots with the, the, the sprigs. They used to cut the sprigs fairly, say, that inch square, or might be quite that first start, and they'd put another one on top, a bit smaller, and another one on top of that, and then mm -hmm. nail them to your boots. and. Uh, Oh, well, they're a little bit of helpful, but then we got the uh, uh, aluminium ones and the nails and them, they were a lot better. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And now you got them, of course, mm. on the boots mm. as, they, as they make them. What sort of boots you were, were you wearing back then? Oh, um, leather sprigs. Leather sprigs, yeah. Uh, no, I can remember um, before going to the footy, go down to the garage and uh, had a boot last and. Uh, and uh, knock all the nails down because mm -hmm. the nails had come up through the bottom of the leather sprigs. Which is why the umpires used to go yeah, along and. Yeah. Which they still did when I started, even though they no longer had sprigs like that, but that was obviously part of the routine. Yeah. 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 Well, some of the aluminium sprigs, they could uh, mm. be pretty sharp. You know, Burr up on the, the sides. Rear, yeah. 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 You ever see a, an injury from that? I know um, Peter Wren had a pretty nasty uh, oh, scar from that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it looked. Uh, I don't know that I, I can't remember seeing any of it, uh, mm. but uh, there probably was. So. Mm. And, uh, but unfortunately the hard, the very hard grounds that we used to play on, uh, the bricks are, re are retained by nails, and, uh, and the nails used to push through the boots into the foot. Uh, the uh, the sprigs used to get ripped out. And the nails, the, the leather would wear down, and the nails, the, the heads of the nails would be exposed. Pretty good weapon. For How many games did you play? Uh, footy. Hmm. Uh, what tell us here? Two forty-six. 